a reading from the book of Exodus. There was a man of the tribe of Levi who had taken a woman of Levi as his wife. She conceived and gave birth to a son. And seeing what a fine child he was, she kept him hidden for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him, coating it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child inside and laid it among the reeds of the river. His sister stood some distance away to see what would happen to him. Now Pharaoh's daughter went down to bathe in the river, and the girls attending her were walking along the riverside. Among the reeds she noticed the basket, and she sent her maid to fetch it. She opened it and looked at and saw a baby boy crying, and she was sorry for him. This is a child of one of the Hebrews, she said. Then the child's sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and find you a nurse among the Hebrew women to suckle the child for you? Yes, go, Pharaoh's daughter said to her. And the girl went off to find the baby's own mother. To her, the daughter of Pharaoh said, Take this child away and suckle it for me. I will see you are paid. So the woman took the child and suckled it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, who treated him like a son. She named him Moses, because, she said, I drew him out of the water. Moses, a man by now, set out at this time to visit the countrymen, and he saw what a hard life they were having, and he saw an Egyptian strike a Hebrew, one of his own countrymen. Looking round, he could see no one inside, so he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. On the following day, he came back, and there were two Hebrews fighting. He said to the man who was in the wrong, What do you mean by hitting your fellow countrymen? And who appointed you, the man retorted, to be prince over us and judge? Do you intend to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Moses was frightened. Clearly, that business has come to light, he thought. When Pharaoh heard of the matter, he would have killed Moses. But Moses fled from Pharaoh and made for the land of Midian. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Seek the Lord, you who are poor, and your hearts will revive. Seek the Lord, you who are poor, and your hearts will revive. I have sunk into the mud of the deep, and there is no foothold. I have entered the waters of the deep, and the waves overwhelmed me. Seek the Lord, Lord, you who are poor, and and your your hearts will revive. This is my prayer to you, my prayer for your favor. In your great love, answer me, O God, with your help that never fails. Seek the Lord, you who are poor, and and your your hearts hearts will revive. As for me in my poverty and pain, let your help, O God, lift me up. I will praise God's name with a song. I will glorify him with thanksgiving. Seek the Lord, you who are poor, and your hearts will revive. The poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God's seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy, and does not spurn his servants in their chains. Seek the Lord, you who are poor, and your hearts will revive. Alleluia, alleluia. Train me, Lord, to observe your law, to keep it with my heart. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to reproach the towns in which most of his miracles had been worked because they refused to repent. Alas for you, Chorazin. Alas for you, Bethsaida. For if the miracles done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. And still I tell you that it will not go as hard on Judgment Day with Tyre and Sidon as with you. And as for you, Capernaum, did you want to be exalted as high as heaven? You shall be thrown down to hell, for if the miracles done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have been standing yet. 
And still I tell you that it will not go as hard with the land of Sodom on judgment day as with you. The Gospel of the Lord. Being young then, I had to wait for my ordination until after my birthday, which is why the two almost coincide. Hence, on this day in 1985, the day of Live Aid, Uh, an extraordinary hot day, you may recall, and was ordained in the Church of the Assumption in Engerford Green. It brings back memories of Canon John Preedy, my parish priest as I'd grown up, and the one who presented me with the chalice as you're presented at ordination, and the chalice which I will use for the celebration of Mass this morning. And memories come back of Canon Brian O'Sullivan, the then parish priest, of course, who'd previously been here in Merrow, of Sister Pauline, one of the teachers in the school when I was in primary school, present at the ordination. It was her who, when I was about age 10, said, hands up all those boys who want to be priests. And three of us put our hands up. I didn't know why I was doing it. I just found myself putting my hand up and the, the thought was planted. Of Lily Van Rysen, the sacristan, and of her sister Mary, two parishioners who've been an incredible encouragement in the parish, of the deacon uh, of the ordination, later himself, of course, Dame Priest, who's been an extraordinary encouragement and close friend ever since, of the parishioners in Catrum, where I was then serving as a deacon, and I was allowed to continue as a priest, (laughs) of Amy, uh, the cook, Uh, in the presbytery there, who cooked a celebration meal, who joined us for a gin and tonic before uh, lunch, and who then screamed with laughter in the kitchen, and we all went to watch as she tried to work out how it was that all the carrots were in the sink and all the hot water was still in the saucepan, something we still to this day can't work out how she did of May Reed, the new head teacher then at the primary school in Catrum, who taught me a great deal then and continued later as we shared an office in the diocese. And indeed, that sense of a pattern being established of Triona, one of the young parishioners who would bring her friends back from the diocese and youth weekends. She would go on to be a parishioner in Crawley, where I later served. One of the friends she brought back, a parishioner in Chichester, where I also served, And she became a colleague working with me uh, in the diocese and who now works as the cathedral secretary. And that was just the first few years. I mention all this because that sense of the pattern, the pattern that is there in the first reading, not comparing myself with Moses, but that sense that when you look back, You can see the way in which these things, which may at the time appear to be random or coincidence, gradually form into this great pattern of God's presence. I could speak for hours about that pattern repeating itself in Catrum, in Chichester, in the Cathedral, in Crawley, and in Guildford, the first parish I've served in that doesn't begin with a C. The fantastic colleagues in presbyteries, schools, diocesan offices, parishioners, friends. I wasn't going to go through in detail, partly uh, because this is not meant to be a trip down memory lane, partly I might miss out someone, partly we would still be here uh, long into Vespers this evening. But I mention it to explore the Lord's lament in the Gospel. He reflects on the facts that the towns have failed to notice, failed to reflect, failed to learn. It can sound as if he is lamenting their lack of gratitude, but I think it is far more important than that. In failing to recognise the presence and action of the Lord in their lives, then they will fail to recognise their relationship with him, and their lives will be poorer, both in this world and the next. 
and look back, it is to recognise that extraordinary presence uh, of God, that extraordinary pattern of God. Not simply in a practical way to give thanks for family and friends, but to recognise the extraordinary blessings that I've received through so many over the 36 years and more. To recognise God in the pattern and to know that this is not in the past tense. To be more alert, to recognise what is happening now. To recognise the incredible mix of friends, old and new, with whom each of us shares our life. And that common source, as we heard in the, the first reading, as Pharaoh's daughter says, I shall call him Moses because I drew him out of the water. All these relationships drawn out of that water where we began together in our baptism. And each of us invited constantly to look back and to recognise from that moment the action and presence of God's life, uh, of God's activity in our lives, to recognise each of us, those patterns which come together to form us into this community of faith. There is an extraordinary amount to offer thanksgiving to God for, as we now do in this Eucharist, the perfect prayer of thanksgiving.